Previously on Haunted. You can't go charging in there like that. You're not a cop anymore. It's a good thing, because if I was, I'd still be waiting for you guys at the DA's office to get me a warrant. Kevin has been gone for nearly two years. You just want to know. What? That some twisted psycho murdered our son? I'm not like you, Frank. I don't want the truth. I won't survive it. Simon says it's time to die. No! The suspect's name is Simon Dean. He has at least three priors for assault, one against a minor. Storm's coming, Frank. Santa Ana's make people crazy. Name is Ruby Pratt, age 29. We found a company ID badge in her pocketbook by the bed. She was a sales rep for Lexicon Copiers. A cheap hotel, drowned in the bathtub, signs of strangulation too. Same MO as the Avery woman's murder last week. Coroner estimates she's been dead three hours. Mm. Judging by the lividity, I'd say too. Who found her? Maid. Uh, face up in less than eight inches of water. Horrible way to go. Never heard of a good way. What are you doing here? I heard dispatch call it in. It sounded a little bit too close to the Avery murder, so I figured I'd better check it out. And why is the Avery murder your business? Wallace Avery hired me 24 hours ago to find out who killed his wife. Well, I hate to tell you this, my friend, but uh, your client is my suspect. Yeah, he did say he had a 200-pound pit bull up as you know what, fingering up for his wife's murder. 200? Now I am gonna bust him. He's got an alibi for this, Marcus, and for his wife. You're looking for a pattern killer. You don't know that. Come and look at the redness on Ruby Pratt's nose and mouth. Look familiar? Belinda Avery's autopsy report showed trace amounts of hexane in her nasal passages and lungs. Industrial strength brake fluid. It's mildly abrasive when it comes in contact with the skin. You pour enough of it on a cloth and gag someone with it, it works just like chloroform. These aren't crimes of passion, Marcus. Sir, this is a pattern. Sir. Let me through. She's my wife, for God's sake. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Stuck. Are these yours? Um, officer? I'm not a cop. But you're in the room. I'm a private investigator. Well, I was just wondering if I could go up and take a peek. A peek? Yeah, at the crime scene. I'm an amateur sleuth. I've read everything. I'm even a member of the James Elroy Crime Club. James Elroy, huh? What's your name? Nadine Powell. I I'm the desk clerk. I'll tell you what, Nadine. Go upstairs and ask for Detective Bradshaw and tell him Mr. Taylor sent you. And, um, 
do yourself a favor. Take the stairs. Two years ago, my son was taken from me. Since then, I've lost everything. My job, my marriage, even my life. But I came back, and the dead came with me. Gotcha. Clients off the hook? Well, it's alibi. I checked out a fence that you're asking. So where does that leave the DA's office? Back to square one. But what's it to you? Your client's cleared. Avery wants his wife's killer. Remind your client that we do too. So did you guys call in a profiler yet? Yeah, Jack Thompson. Let me guess. He says you're looking for a male Caucasian, late 20s, early 30s, intelligent, strong, loner type. Exactly. I just paid a little visit to Ruby Pratt's boss over at Lexicon Copiers. Ruby Pratt's boss? Belinda Avery was a regional sales manager for Harry and Technologies. Lexicon Copiers was her biggest account. Guess who her best sales rep was? Ruby Pratt. So they both could have known the killer. You're amazing. Common sense. No, you were always ahead of everyone else. That's why I hated going to movies with you. You'd figure them out in the first 10 minutes. I found an old picture of us and Kevin in a scrapbook last night. And I thought you might like it. Jess, you're looking at pictures again? I miss those days. I've been cleared as a suspect, Mr. Taylor. I just want to know who killed my wife. I'm trying, Mr. Erie. Found out anything? I believe the killer knew both your wife and this other victim, Ruby Pratt. Never heard of her. Well, she was one of your wife's best sales reps. Belinda had dozens of good reps all over the country, but what does this have to do with it? Both Ruby and your wife went to these motels. More than likely with the same man. Belinda wouldn't have an affair. She wasn't that way. She loved me. I know she did. When I got called down to the morgue, and I had to see what some sick bastard did to her, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I help? 
Uh, just browsing. Astrology, tarot, numerology, Eastern religions, cults, voodoo, name it. I've got it. Ghosts? Mm-hmm. Oh, that one's a must. Describes the five levels of hauntings. Sense attack, communication, uh, electrical control. You know, your blender and your toaster go on the fritz. Is that right? Uh, level four is the trickster stage. Poltergeists and angry ghosts. All a big setup for number five, the danger level. Lost souls motivated in death to achieve what they couldn't in life. Great. Well. Plenty to choose from. Which would you like? I'll take them all. Must be some ghost. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, you remember me? Yeah. You're the detective that was here the other day. Mr. Taylor. Frank. Um, actually, Nadine, I have to do some investigating back up in the room, and I was wondering if you... Yes! I mean, sure. Do you have a problem with elevators? No, they seem to have a problem with me. So, Frank, what's your affiliation with the case? I'm working for the husband of one of the victims, and I have a gut feeling that whoever did this is going to do it again. I do that, too. I listen to my gut when I'm trying to solve a case. Or when I'm reading one. Damn, that's my boss. I'll be right back. Mr. Taylor? Mr. Taylor? Frank? You need... I'm fine. And you had me a little scared there. What the heck happened here? I slipped into the tub. It was overflowing. Well, sometimes housekeeping will leave the faucet dripping when they're cleaning the tubs. I don't think this was housekeeping's fault. So did you get what you came for? Not exactly. Nadine, you work here. Why would a woman like Ruby Pratt pick a dump like this to have an affair in? 
honestly, we rent rooms by the hour. For a lot of the people that come in here, it's not about feeling good about themselves. Sometimes it's not even about the sex. It's about getting even with somebody. I thought I knew her better than she knew herself, but maybe I didn't. Are you sure I can't get you a drink? No, thanks. Mr. Pratt, do you have any idea why your wife was at the Addison Hotel that day? I knew exactly why she was there, Mr. Taylor. It was business. Unfortunately, I deal with this issue a lot, and um, I don't quite know how to tell you this. Then don't tell me. Please. Mr. Pratt, whoever killed your wife is probably going to kill again. So if there's anything that you can think of. I wouldn't even know where to begin. I'm a professor at a junior college. I teach math. And in my world, every problem has a definitive solution. And yours. Even if I knew the solution, I'm, I'm not sure if I would want it. I understand. If anything else occurs to you, I'll call. Uh, one more question. Um, beside yourself, who is the one person in the world that your wife might have confided in? Maybe Alice Ionetta, Ruby's best friend? Well, I wouldn't say that we were best friends, but we were pretty close, I guess. Did she confide in you? What do you mean? Ruby's murder suggests that she was seeing someone other than her husband. What business is that of yours, Mr. Taylor? I'm just trying to make sure that more people don't die. <sighs> there was a guy, Jimmy Stent. <laughs> Funny name, right? He was a musician. We met him at a convention in San Diego. Ruby thought he was cute. He had this shaved head and a Van Dyke. Was it serious? They spent a lot of time together, if that's what you're asking. I'm asking, was she in love with him? Well, I'm pretty sure that he was in love with her. Why? He wanted more than she could give him. I don't think it ended very well. I haven't been able to run this guy's stent down. Supposedly, he's overseas. Dead end? I don't know. Apparently, Ruby dumped him about a month ago. You mean like for the wrong guy? Unless Jimmy Stent didn't like being dumped. I got you. I'll look into it. I really appreciate it, Marcus. Oh, no problem. Looks like Frank might have got a break. Well, at least somebody's getting him. And seriously, have you ever worked on a case where this many suspects have alibis so bulletproof? Hey, we don't get to choose them. And look, when we put this guy's stin on the wire, who knows? We might get a hit. Frank's not the only one to get lucky, right? These days, I honestly don't know. What do you mean? Things have been different lately. You mean with Frank? Frank, me, everything. It's like something, I don't know, it's like something isn't right. By that, I take it you're not talking about the current value of my pension. <laughs> really, you haven't noticed anything? Like what? Like the way Frank's been acting, or the hours he keeps. Or the way he puts everything together so quickly. Exactly. Like he suddenly found a crystal ball. Well, maybe he's just a good detective. Maybe. Oh, come on. Look, you and I both know we have our good days and bad days. And after eight years on this job, I figure they pretty much even up. I'm guessing it's the same for you. Sure. As for you and Frank, losing Kevin, splitting up, you two have been through a lot together. So whatever this thing is, I think you should talk about it with him. I bet he could use the call. A lost soul, it can be a powerful spirit capable of pushing or shaking 
can shadow windows or unlock doors, make you feel dizzy, cold, or nauseated. They can even reach out to the living in a physically hostile attack. But the key to dealing with any lost soul is to ascertain who the ghost was. Was their ending just or unjust? Did they long for death, or was their love of life so strong they now are shocked to have it gone? Only by answering these questions can you understand what the ghost wants. Cool place. And you have an office upstairs? Believe me, James Elroy wouldn't give it a second look. Oh. So, um... On the phone, you said you had something about the case. Yeah. You know the victim? Ruby. Yeah. I think she was getting revenge on her husband. How so? Well, I saw him when the cops brought him to the hotel, and he just had this look on his face. It was sheer horror. Like, like it was the first time in his life he realized he didn't even know her. Poor man. You came down here to tell me that? Yeah. Well, actually, I was thinking maybe I could buy you dinner. Dinner? They serve food here, right? Yeah, but, uh, um, thanks. But I've, I've got all this stuff to do upstairs, um, with the case. So, um, but, but thanks for the tip. Some detective you are. You don't have a clue. next victim is going to be if we don't hurry. But how do you know this? I can't explain. Whoa, 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 then I can't help. Just meet me there. Please. You here for the three-for-one special? A woman checked in here tonight, looking like she was going to meet someone. So, what's it to you? She wasn't one of your regulars, and she was alone, right? I need to know where that woman is right now. She's in trouble. It's L.A. Who is it? Not you. Not yet. Ames Winters, room 202. Winters? I got another 
So you don't remember anything else? Car parked here in the lot, another witness? I was too late. You say that like you knew it was coming down. You brandished a weapon, Frank. That's a felony. Under the circumstances, I'll let it slide. But remember, you're not on the force anymore. And I'll see you in my office when this is over. Bad deja vu. Just like old times. <laughs> no, Frank. Things have definitely changed, man. Like, how'd you know to come here? Well, that was... What? A hunch? You know, if you ask me, you hit this one a bit too close. Not close enough. Okay. You know Marshall Winters was a buyer for Copy Man Copy Shops? Don't tell me a subsidiary of Lexicon Copiers. Got it. All three victims connected through their work. That means the killer must have really known that world. Well, it's not Jimmy Stead. He was in Germany yesterday. Hey. I asked her to come here. We're getting worried about you, Frank. How did you know that Marshall Winters was in danger? I didn't know it was Marshall Winters. But you knew somebody was in danger. Look, if I came to you and I told you I was sick, would you believe me? And if I came to you and told you that I just won the lottery, would you believe me then? Why? Because I've never known you to lie. Then you're just going to have to trust me when I say that I have some kind of insight into this case that I don't claim to understand, but I also can't deny it. And we're just going to have to live with that. I'm afraid so. Look, I have something for you, so don't leave yet, okay? Case files for the Pratt and Avery murders. I'll get the Winters when I can. Why? Because I'm tired of seeing the bad guys get all the breaks. That doesn't sound like you, Jess. I know. But... Lately, I've had this sense of dread, and I just can't shake it. Well, maybe you need to get away from it all for a little while. I don't think that I could get far enough.
you bastard. And your shoes cheating the whole time. Nadine, it's Frank. Do me a favor. Get the hotel Addison registries for the last year and bring them over to my place, okay? Good. Thanks. I'll see you in a half an hour. It's Nadine. Marcus Bradshaw, leave a message. Marcus, listen, put an APB out on Bob Pratt right now, Ruby's husband. He's the killer. He murdered three to cover up one so that we would think it was a pattern killing and not a jealous husband. And get a unit over to his house and check the greenhouse south of it. I'll be home getting more evidence. Stop this, Pratt. I think it's much too late. How'd you get the women to the hotels? Well, I said that they were going to meet their husbands there. How romantic. How about your wife? You didn't have to offer Ruby a fling, did you? She was already having one. Shut up. What do you have to do? Pretend to be Jimmy Stent? No. It's a real logical solution to your problem there, Professor. Three for one. Disguise a crime of passion as a pattern killing. Clever, huh? No. Three women died from your jealousy. There's nothing clever about that. <laughs>
okay. It's okay. Everything's gonna be alright. He's downstairs, sir. We found the photos at Pratt's. Plus, we turned up some divorce papers Ruby was about to file. Mr. Avery, listen, it's Frank. Um, I've got some news for you. And I found Ruby's name in last year's hotel registry, so she's been there before. Thanks for your statement. It's going to be very helpful. That's for sure. Can you give us a minute? OK, but remember to call if you need anything. Well, I hear you're going to be OK. So they tell me. Look, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was stupid to just go in when I found the door open like that. I'm not a very good detective. No, you did great, Nadine. Yeah? Yeah. And next time, if you stop by my place, I promise it won't be quite so bad. <laughs> No offense, Frank, but I'm never coming here ever again. Take care. You okay? Yeah. Getting used to rejection. I'm not talking about Nancy Drew. Hey, we stopped one of the bad ones, Jess. Yeah. What? I just wonder how many more are out there. Less of them than there are of us. I hope so. <sighs> That's some nice work tonight, Mr. Taylor. Thanks. Now, Frank, what are we going to do about that bad feeling your wife's got? <laughs> <laughs> 